Hey, hey, everybody. What's going on? Uh, it's Fly Life, and welcome back to episode 6 of Survival 101. I know it's been a little bit uh, since I've been or have uploaded a video. I just I got busy with in real life stuff. Uh, found out that we're having another kid. Got sick a little bit, and I just never made it to, uh, to recording another episode. But I'm back, and hopefully we can hit some kind of schedule maybe a little bit. Maybe once, you know, a video once every two weeks or something like that, we can work towards. That's the goal. I don't know if it's going to happen because football season's coming up and I'm coaching my son's team uh, like usual. And, you know, it's just a busy, busy time of the year. Everybody's got stuff going on. But I wanted to show you guys. I put a, finally put a roof on our iron farm, uh, villager trading hall. It's pretty bland. I just wanted to get it covered. Um, so I did that several weeks ago. I haven't even touched Minecraft for like a month. Um, but uh, we're going to work on some stuff today. Um, the biggest thing being a we're going to build a, uh, a super smelter area over there on the other side of our house. Um, we're, we've got an area kind of plotted out a little bit. We're going to get that going so that we can start smelting up a whole bunch of copper and other materials that we've got collected because I want to use a whole bunch of copper as we start building up this area into our little seaport uh, area that we've got that I want to do. So I'm going to go over there and I'll be right back. All right, so I want to show you guys something. Uh, I've got a little bit more done. Or, well, I guess I've got it started, actually. Uh, I've got a little bit of the roof line on this side going and i think i'm liking it it's it's very not symmetrical it's almost symmetrical but not quite uh, which is something that i'm trying to get away from a little bit is doing symmetrical stuff uh, it's actually really hard especially when you're just building you have to actually stop and think about about it a little bit more um, and i'm really just kind of going with the flow with this uh which is what i normally do i don't normally plan things out in creative i just kind of go for it so it does normally take me a little bit longer but it's my preferred preferred way um doing it at least it seemingly might take me a little bit longer. i just do most of the creative process in the flow that's what i like to do and i've got our smelter um going it's actually going to be an 11 11 furnace array is what we end up having the space for. We might have to scoot the walls out a little bit to add for the, the bounce back spot for the minecart that's going to go along to deposit items and fuel in the back here. But that'll be pretty easy, and I, this should be fine. Um, we're just going to have this go up against the wall, and this is just going to be deep slate probably with some deep slate bricks with some cobble thrown in the next day. And I did a little bit more work. Build out my roof line here. I think I'm going to make this part slope a little bit. I think we need to check that out, see how that looks. I don't know if I like this. This look I want, or make make it slope this way, um, because this part over here I'm gonna keep it kind of I'm gonna keep it rather open. I'm gonna keep all of this open really, um, but I definitely want to keep this area open because, like I said, this is where the lava farm is gonna be, and the the smithy area, you know, where they're you know working on tools and whatnot, uh, weapons, armor, that kind of thing. I want to keep it kind of over in the sky. We'll probably put up like a, um, maybe like a, like an open grid, you know, using some campfire, some ashless campfires, um, up above. But I want I got to figure out how to get how to make that connection from here to there. Um, so I'm gonna see if I can't get that figured out real quick because I think what I want to do is.
for the for the corners anyways then gonna do be four four tall I think will be okay but we're gonna we're gonna strip this I think that'll look good. And we're going to have to have some kind of... I don't want this part side to be nearly as tall. Um, I might might even lower this a little bit because that's, that's really open. But, you know, most blacksmiths working areas, at least back in the day, they were not... They were not so vaulted uh, like this. They were... They were... Almost want to say tight, uh, closed, and the, you know to help help retain heat, heat inside. So while you're working the, the the metal, that it stays hot longer instead of it all dissipating into the air above you. So I think we're gonna have to lower our our roof line. You know, maybe one, maybe two blocks. So we'll we'll probably have to rework that out. We'll see once we, you know, get this attached. Figured out a little bit more. But that's the little progress update. Alright, so I've got everything in place for the furnace now. Um, I did have to do a little bit of a redesign of the roof because I forgot about adding on these extra sections for where the minecarts are so that we can have those just travel across on their own on both sides. And I forgot, you know, the stopping block to send it on the return but it's all, that that is all in place now we've got our furnace it works um let me back up and i'll show you the the roof line that i i switched it to um since we're right next to a river i was like well hey let's make it so when it rains the water runs off backwards into the into the river um i think that looks pretty cool so we've got this side done, yeah, all enclosed. Now, and I'm I'm probably gonna maybe put some windows up here. I might change this back wall to have some, uh, you know, maybe like a uh, maybe some fences in here, so that there's maybe some like vents or airflow. Uh, you know, I th I think that might look cool. I don't know. We'll we'll play around with it here in a little bit, but I guess I'll show you um the furnace system real quick so we've got our furnaces here with hoppers coming out of them coming into these chests you can see we've already smelted a few a few items but so how these how this works is we've got these two chest mine carts if you flick that lever down it sends them running along powered rails that just they just go back and forth as long as that lever is flicked, these things will just travel back and forth, dropping their their items. The top one is for items that's that we want to smelt, so food, ores, uh, wood if we're making charcoal for whatever reason, or say like kelp, cactus. All those things would be in the top, and then our fuel is in this bottom back row. And so, you know, right now we, we don't have a whole lot of fuel. We've got some coal, but we are going to put a lava farm, you know, just a small one down underneath here, I think, so that we can keep this thing supplied pretty easily. And then I do have these repeaters and this redstone line going into these, these chests that are pulling the smelted items out of the chest or not not the chest the furnaces i'm going to move this though and that's so that when we're we're smelting and i think they may have fixed this but um there used to be a furnace glitch where you can just continuously smelt items in here and then when you're ready to pull all you know it would count even items that have been pulled out um it would count all that XP. I think they, they patched that. And I know, I, I believe it came back again a little bit and they patched it and it's something different. Um, you know, I'll have to do some research and maybe cover it 
hear a little bit later in the in the video. But basically, what this does is it this redstone line and these repeaters lock these hoppers so that they stop pulling items out. So if I were to put a uh, let me see, let me see a fine fine one that's got some. There we go. Let's uh, just put a log there. Putting that that item in here, that should stay inside this furnace now that it's on. See? Because this redstone line is powered, this hopper is locked, and it can't pull anything out. Now let me go, I'll go flip that lever, and now that charcoal is down in here. So that's what that does, and that just allows me to, when I've been smelting a lot of things, I can lock them, and I'll come in here and I can pull, pull the items directly out of the furnace and get that XP. All right, so now I am going to get started on this other half right here. I'm gonna figure out my roof line over here. I don't know if I'm gonna, I might just continue this one, I think, and this will just kind of be like an open area where we'll have some anvils, um, you know, maybe a cauldron or two so that, you know, it can look like a uh, an actual smithy where we work on armor and tools and whatnot. So I'm going to get get to cracking on that. OK, so I got some de little details put in. It's still kind of bare. Um, so if you have any suggestions how maybe you think I should decorate this, I think maybe some bushes on the outside, maybe a couple flowers just to kind of spruce that part up a little bit, you know, give it a, a little pop of color. Um, let's see. I, I did just extend my roof line all the way out here um i gotta fix oh that's okay maybe maybe we'll fix that 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 corner is messed up but the rest of this is just going to be open i still got to get some maybe like an arch like a fence arch right here and then something going on on this side probably something similar where it just kind of follows up and maybe has a pillar or two of support over here but we got a few gates to get in here and we did populate a whole bunch of lava buckets we went to the i went to the nether uh, and did that uh, so that i could make what i have down below which is the makings of our lava farm so to make renewable lava you need a lava source you need this block right here, which is dripstone. You can find it in dripstone caves. The wandering trader will sometimes sell it. I found this way back in episode one, I believe, maybe two. Um, but so what you have to do is let's get us a block to climb up. Um, what you doing right there? You put lava above any any block uh, it just has to be uh, one layer thick and then on the underside of that block that the lava is over you put this drip stone and you have to leave a gap and then to collect the lava that's falling you have to put where are they where are my cauldrons uh, anyways you have to put a cauldron so we're just we're just gonna make a whole bunch I actually think it's just out here. Okay, there's a few. Not a whole lot, but a few. That in there. We're gonna just I think that might be enough. A few more. So what you do is Come along here underneath where you've got the lava and then it'll slowly fill up over time. As you know, as this drips, it'll just slowly fill up and we'll come back here in a little bit and I'll show you kind of what I mean. And 
And we don't have enough to do this whole... Whole little farm I got. Oh, see? Right there. Boom. See, that one filled instantly. Filling the rest. Oh, and there's another one. And you can see they change colors, too, uh, when they... And they do fill up because what we'll do is we'll dig this out another two or three layers and we'll, we'll maybe put in like a water uh, a, a water flow system to push all the buckets in one direction or maybe we'll just let them fall on the ground and we'll pick them up but we'll we'll just run underneath it with an empty bucket Yeah, so to collect these, all you do is you you right click on it with a bucket. So super simple, easy to do. So that's what this is going to be for. Uh, I'm going to dig this out a few more, a few more layers so I can just run underneath it when it when it fills up. I think probably over here in this area we're, we need another we need more dripstone so we're going to set up an automatic dripstone farm with some pistons uh, so that we can just automatically uh, you know when we're in this area over here at our little base we can just grow some more of these so that we can finish populating this and this is this is probably plenty big enough for for what we've got for what we're going to need for as much as we're going to be smelting, but I figured I got it. That's how much, you know, I went ahead and made this because I wasn't sure how far all this would go. And so we're just going to run with it. And, you know, then we shouldn't have to ever have to worry about needing any more lava. So I'm going to, I'm going to dig this out real quick. Uh, and then when I come, when we come back, I'll show you guys how to build that automatic dripstone farm I just mentioned. Okay, so I added another little detail here in the middle, just some some lava and cauldrons, um, with some fire underneath it, saying that's where we're heating our. We got some molten metal there, but let's go down below, and we're gonna make that dripstone farm that I was talking about. We've this thing's going pretty good. We're gonna have plenty of lava. Um, so let's see. Well, first, actually, I need to go get. So to make this farm, it's actually super simple. We just need a two two pieces of redstone per dripstone block that we're gonna use, and then um, we need a couple of dripstone blocks, a couple of pistons, and an observer. We've got dripstone blocks. We got the dripstone right there. Just there. Okay. Then feeding into that, we are going to do hoppers all the way. Now behind those hoppers, we'll go ahead and Back that up and this is where our pistons will go I'll go on this level right here one two three four five and then on skip a row and then the next level of pistons goes there and now we can place our observers I think I said two observers for one Five, but and I can. Oh yeah, we're gonna widen this for sure. Cause this farm is super duper slow. Dripstone, I I don't remember what the tick rate is on it, but it takes forever for that stuff to grow. Okay, and we want to put our redstone there. And then we'll also put redstone here. Okay. And that's so that when this observer 
activates, um, which you'll see why, well, like that. So yeah, I removed those blocks and it popped all those, made all those pistons activate. So basically what happens, this, red, this observer senses the change in a block in front of it on the face that it's looking at. So if I do that, boom. Anytime a block is changes state here, whether it's placed, removed, or, or it grows in front of it. So basically, we'll have dripstone <clears throat> hanging down from up there. It'll grow down or grow up. And once it hits that piston, it'll activate this observer, which then power gives a redstone signal to this block, which powers both that redstone line and that redstone line. We need to widen this a little bit more. So what we're gonna do is, right, there's that. Now let's put our, put our chest back down, back over here. Get our hopper line there. <clears throat> okay, so now what we want we're going to need some glass, too. Want to take... a dripstone block and put it... there. Now, underneath that... like we did over here with the lava... We're going to put dripstone right there. I guess I got one more. Now all we need is we need to take That one's already water for some reason. That's weird. That but okay, so we're gonna do that and then lock that off there. Hindsight, I should have waited to put the redstone in because I'm about to wash it all out. But not a big deal. So what you want to do is you take your water bucket. And you're going to put a water source above every block. So since it's water and it'll make its own source, you can just go every other block. Uh, actually, just... Okay, and now... needed a couple more now what we'll do is we will repopulate this with redstone take out these scaffolding blocks boom and now we need to go get some sand because we want to put a barrier in front of this dripstone that grows and gets knocked off by the piston can only fall straight down into our hoppers and flow into this chest. That's what we want. Nothing else. Wall that off. All right, let's go. That's still work. Uh, lock those hoppers hoppers and pull a whole bunch of XP out at once. That's nice. All 
Alright, so again, we would just want to put... So, how dripstone works is that water up above, it comes out and as... Because water's dripping from that and it's connected to a dripstone block, that's what causes the stalactites and stalagmites to grow. I can never remember which one's which, but... Yep, and then just put glass in front of it, and then when it grows, it'll pop them off eventually. All of these will have something on them, and they'll be, you know, they'll all grow down too, and then one of them will randomly get in front of the observer, and then they'll all pop off, and we'll start again. Okay, so I think that's just about going to wrap up the episode for today, everybody. Today, we uh, we built a super smelter in a, in a smithy house. Uh, we made a lava farm down below it, and we also made a pointed dripstone farm. And let's go check on that real quick to see how much we've gotten. Um, I've kind of been detailing a little bit around the smithy, added some, some bushes and some flowers. And I changed that middle part from cauldrons to just a... Just a lava, basically kind of like a lava blade, a lava pit with campfires underneath it to get that smoky effect. Um, but we're going to run down, run down real quick, see what we've gotten from the dripstone farm real quick. And it looks like all of our lava is just about full. So we've got a couple that have grown down here. Uh, see what we've got. We've got 12 so far. So we'll be able to, uh, We'll probably eventually extend this some more be just because this is so slow, but that's not a bad start. Um, because we've also got to finish filling this out so that we can have all this filled with lava, but that's more than enough for, for what we've got. And we've got plenty of lava in here already. There's all of these should have lava in them. And even got a couple still back here. I want to get this to where these are all completely full. That chest is full. And then we've got some goodies in here. So, but yeah, that wraps it up for today. Um, I think what we're going to work on, on next is we're going to prep to go to the end. Uh, we're going to fight the dragon, I think, next episode. And we're going to... We're going to go get some wings, find ourselves some shulker boxes, and then we'll really be able to get started on, on some of the more fun things in the game. Alright, so I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, leave me a comment down below, and don't forget to hit that like button. Thanks so much.